Hey guys, DVD Mike. Um, this video is another in-depth one. I've got a collection update upcoming for all the people who like my collection videos. Um, I'm just waiting for someone to come back off someone I lent out. Um, this is going to be, I'll say, an in-depth one. This is going to be based on John Carpenter's The Thing. It's going to be a three media review. So there's three different types of media that this video is going to be based upon. Um, I'm going to go from the three state-of-the-art ways to watch the thing. Um, one of those is slightly debatable, but I'll go into that in a bit more detail when we go in depth. So let's have a look. Hey, okay, let's see what we can see. So here we have the three versions of the thing that I own. Um, in chronological order of the ones I bought. We have the PAL Pioneer Cinema Laserdisc of the thing. Um, for those who don't know Laserdisc, I've go watch the Laserdisc update. Um, so going a bit more detail about them there. Um, but this is a Pioneer Cinema release, which is kind of before Criterion did their own thing and made um, collections sort of synonymous with their brand. Um, everyone had their own little thing and this was the PAL Pioneer Cinema release which includes exclusive interview with John Carpenter, chapter information and cinema trailer. It didn't sound like a lot back in those days but this disc was first released check my facts here in 1995 so I was 15 when this came out and it wasn't long after that I actually bought it. I think I was about 16, 17 when I bought it. Um, see, it's a, it's not a gatefold release because it's only a single disc, but it's quite a nice looking sleeve. It's presenting the correct um, widescreen ratio of 2.35 to 1. And because it's a power lace disc and didn't have the room, it's only in Dolby Surround, but that's not too big a deal considering obviously didn't have Dolby Digital when the film came out. Um, Pioneer Cinema, you can see there's um, a list of the other films they did. Rebecca, Spellbound, Spiral Spearcase, Jewel on the Side, Notorious. There's a lot of Hitchcock there. Silkwood. This is the only one I own. And one lovely little quote. The thing truly has the same quality on lace disc that the movie did. So says some person who would know. So let's get the disc out of here. There we go the Pioneer Cinema lace disc release of the thing. Side one. No, this is CLV for both sides. So there's no pause frame or slow motion, it's just the film. Um, the latest database, which anyone who wants to know about Laserdisc, that's probably the best place you could go to learn about Laserdisc, um, state that this is one of the best looking power titles and it does look very good. Um, for the extras they list on the front, say chapter selection, obviously everyone knows about DVD and Blu-ray now is pretty, you know, fay with things like that. The theatrical trailer is the last chapter. And the interview with Carpenter, the exclusive interview, is on bit of paper. And this was by Japanese film critic someone who I'm not even going to try and pronounce because I will murder the dialogue, the name even. Um, but it's a little question and answer sheet on the making of the thing. And a little thing about the forthcoming Pioneer titles. Escape from LA, mm, lovely. Actually they're all pretty naff, apart from Strange Days. But hey -oh. So that was the first version of the thing I bought. And then when I begrudgingly upgraded to the likes of DVD, I bought this, which is the first power release of the thing. 
Now, this has quite a lot of extras, but for all the people who are not au fait with Laserdisc, don't think that the Laserdisc is missing the extras because it wasn't good enough or something like that. Because all the extras and the transfer from this version are a direct copy of the 1998 Pioneer, not Pioneer, sorry, 1998 Universal Signature Collection Laserdisc. So it's not an anamorphic video, it's just a direct copy of the Laserdisc. And including all the extras that were on that Laserdisc box set. I say it came out in 1998, and that was pretty late for Laserdiscs, really. Um, it wasn't far after that that they stopped making them. I mean, this came out pretty much around the same time. I think it was um, a couple of weeks afterwards. They did a lot like that. Did more rats and um, a few other signature collections, like Out of Sight. They had duplicates on DVD. DVD. But this does have decent extras. It's got The Thing, Terror Take Shape, 80 Minute Original Documentary and Location Footage. Outtakes, it's got the commentary from Lazy Disc, which I'm pretty sure, I haven't re-listened to this in a while, and I knew they do on the Big Trouble Little China one, they do mention Laser Disc. Um, it's got production notes, cast filmmaker notes, location design. It's a pretty packed disc, and the Laser Disc box set was pretty packed as well. But like I say, it's non-anamorphic. So, yeah, it is very good looking compared to the standard NTSC laser disc of the thing, the signature collection. But, I would argue that. Production notes there. The PAL laser disc has this pipped. Obviously, not for extras, but for just how decent the, um, the door went there. Um, where was I? Yes. Um, I would argue that the Power Laser Disc, due to the increased resolution, yes, it's an analog format, no, it's not digital, but since the master for this was worse than the master for that, I'd argue superiority for picture quality on that, and it still does look good to this day. Obviously, at 42 inches over a crappy laser display that I've got, the quality, you know, isn't amazing, but with a decent laser player, I think it could beat that. But then, I stepped up. We have the Universal UK Blu-ray release of the thing. Now this, obviously is massive in 1080p high definition. Now this has the remastered 5.1 track that was on the DVD. Well, I say remastered, faked 5.1 track. And unlike the American version, this does have the Terror Take Shape documentary. On the American version, that was all put into picture in picture inserts, but on this, you can watch it separately. Um, it does have the commentary from the Lace Disc, and I have watched it on here, and I'm pretty sure from the bits I've watched, they, have, they don't mention Lace Disc, but. What I remember on the DVD version, they do say laser, so I'm gonna to have to watch it back. Now, obviously, that's in 1080p, so it's um, closer to the original master, and it is a new master compared to the both DVD and both Laserdisc releases. The problem is there's digital noise reduction on that transfer, or well, if not on the transfer, then definitely on the disc. So it does sully the detail quite badly. Um, there's just a complete lack of fine detail over the whole transfer. There are some parts where it looks really good, but some close-ups on skin tones, they just don't look right. Um, I'm slightly disappointed about this, but it is sort of par for the course on some of the Universal titles. But at least we got the decent extras that the Americans are missing on the disc, which is a, it's kind of a bonus, and yes, I do like having it in 1080p. I mean, the DVD's become kind of redundant now since all the extras are replicated on the Blu-ray, and it's obviously a lot better quality, but I'll still have a place in my heart for the latest disc, because even to this day, it's still great quality. I mean, yeah, you can bring on technology to try and trump what went before but for some reason I, I always stick with the latest on this one 
Um, if there is a new remaster of the thing, obviously I'll buy it again and do like the film. As I do with pretty much all Carpenter Russell films. But for the time being, I think the latest just wins out in this one. Not on extras, of course, but just in sheer picture quality. And I'm a bit of a snob when it comes to picture quality. But there we go. So that's this little update of the thing on Displaced Media. I suppose is the easiest way to call it. Um, so until my next DVD update, this is DVD Mike saying, see you next time.